Hello everyone, this is Yeshua Said My Name. It's been a while since I've had an opportunity to make a video. I've had a lot going on with family recently, uh, personal obligations. Uh, before I uh, delve into this 501c3 topic, I'm gonna make this a, a brief video for now because I want to go in depth into another topic that I'm being led of the Holy Spirit to do later today. So hopefully there'll be an upcoming video of another topic the Lord is laying on my heart. So I hope you'll tune in to see that either later today or tomorrow. However, before I begin this video on 501c3, I wanted to show you this hat that a sister in Christ made me by hand. Her name is Elaine Cleed. Uh, she, um, she knit this hat for me for winter time by hand. And I want to thank you, sister, if you're watching this video for making this for me. She sent this to my PO box. Uh, she's far more talented than I am. I don't have an artistic bone in my body. So um, I have respect for those who can do these kinds of things. But thank you, sister, for this. I will be using it on the cold winter days that we have here uh, in my state. And we're due to have more snow and ice, I think, in the next week. Uh, getting back to the topic at hand here, the 501c3. What exactly does it mean to say that your church is a 501c3? It basically means it's a gag order from the state or from the government limiting what a pastor is allowed to speak about. Uh, and there are proofs of this uh, uh, and on PDF documents uh, like this website I'm on right now that you can download. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm on scribd.com, truth about 501c3 exempt status churches. Now, for those of you who are new to this, a 501c3 makes your church a corporation or a business. When you do that, you then align yourself as a church under the regulations of what the state or the government will allow you to, to do or talk about. And I feel, in my opinion, this is why many uh, pastors and churches will not expose the New World Order, will not expose the evils of the Vatican or Freemasonry and so on and so on and so on, simply because they're under a gag order to not speak and expose these things very much. And I wanted to take you to this website, or at all. I wanted to take you to this website and show you, uh, for those of you who are new to this, what a 501c3 exempt status means for a church. Uh, going to this top paragraph here on this page, how a church operating a 501c3 nonprofit is given a gag order since it is no longer a sovereign institution, but is a corporation and creature of the state. And it goes on to say how a pastor is converted to basically a puppet of the state. He then, by signing this 501c3 tax exempt status, has to go along with what the state or slash government allows he or she to speak about. Uh, it makes sense that the Lord uh, actually gave me more of a platform on YouTube than I ever had in an organized church building to speak about the topics that I'm talking about. Not that I'm a pastor or anything, but I found that even with adult classes that I would teach in a church that I used to attend, I was watched by people. Uh, sometimes people would walk by my classroom door and watch me, uh, especially Freemasons and things like that. You don't have the freedoms. Um, and as a pastor, if you confront a pastor about Freemasonry uh, uh, creeping into your church or false teachings, new age teachers, which I encountered as well, you will be told to be quiet, stop rocking the boat. They'll dismiss you, ignore you. Why? It may not be because they don't care about it. It's because they're bound by this gag order spoken of here on this website to no longer speak about these subjects because they're now an institution and a corporation of the state. So coming on down here further on this website, the truth about 501c3 exempt status You'll see on this website, and you can go up here and look up the, um, the IRA, uh, URL address. Most churches in America have organized as 501c3 of religious organizations. It goes on to say here that it was instituted by Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, let me see. For a 501c3 church to openly speak out or organize in opposition to anything that the government declares to be uh, legal, even if it is immoral, abortion, homosexuality, etc., cetera, uh, the church will jeopardize its exempt status. So, the government slash church tells you, I'm sorry, state tells you what you can talk about. So if they're not allowed to really rail against abortion, homosexuality, which we see running rampant in the churches now uh, and being accepted because they don't want to lose their tax exempt status. They've gone from being a sovereign entity or the body of Christ to being owned by the state. You are then told by the state, which is run by uh, the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan himself, what you can talk about. Uh, so let's add to this, these parentheses here, the new world order, the Vatican, the antichrist, the false prophet, uh, uh, 
you know, new age movement, uh, the UFO alien agenda. Let's let's put all that underneath abortion and homosexuality, etc. If you talk about these things and expose them to the body of Christ, you'll lose your exempt status. It says here, no church has ever been taxable before or after 1954. In order to be taxable, the church must be under the jurisdiction. So, you know, and you go on down here, to, it shows you how it all formed, that Lyndon B. Johnson, under his administration, brought this to be. Uh, ending this video here, it says, in the words of Steve Nestor, IRS senior revenue officer, he says, quote, I am not the only IRS employee who's wondered why churches go to the government and seek permission to be exempted from a tax they didn't owe to begin with and seek a tax deductible status that they've always had anyway. Many of us have marveled at how church leaders want to be reg regulated and controlled by an agency of the government that most Americans have prayed uh, would just get out of their lives. Churches are in an amazingly unique position that they don't seem to know or appreciate the implication of what it would mean to be free of government control. So why is it that so many churches then align themselves with 501c3 status if it's not necessary? And here you have, um, you know, Steve Nestor amazed by this because the Jesuits have infiltrated the churches. In Revelation 17, the, the uh, denominations are called the harlot daughters of Mystery Babylon. These are the denominations under Vatican Rome. They are being infiltrated by the Vatican's Jesuit agenda. These Jesuit leaders are taking over in the pulpits. Therefore, they are for the New Age movement. They are for Freemasonry. They are for the teachings of the Vatican and the way this world is going. They're not going to speak out against it. So if you do have a legitimate pastor that wants to come forward and expose these things, his church is already in a 501c3 status. He's told primarily in these documents, if you come out against these things, you'll lose uh, your, your ability to speak about these things. Uh, he'll be persecuted for it, maybe lose his pastorate. That's why a lot of this is going on. So when this gentleman here, Steve Nestor, is amazed that a church would put themselves under this, that's not by accident. These Jesuit controlled denominations, these harlot daughters of Revelation 17 know exactly what they're doing. And it is to suppress by the enemy's agenda, suppress getting the knowledge out of what's going on in these last days. So that is why I feel God has led me along with others, uh, like Stephen ben, brother Stephen Ben um, uh, at times past, brother Alan Lamont had a, a video channel out exposing these things. I pray more and more people come out to expose the deeds of darkness, according to Ephesians 5.11. However, if you are in a 501c3 church and you notice that your pastor will not confront these topics, these topics are not spoken of, or if you confront him or her about what's infiltrating the church and they dismiss you, there could be a reason for that. Uh, 501c3. So I encourage you to look more into this, uh, the 501c3 exempt status churches. Uh, what that means, it is essentially a gag order for the churches. The state tells you what you can speak of and what you can't speak of. Um, God bless and uh, thank you for listening today.